Look up the word crazy in the dictionary and you might just find an asterisk beside the definition that says, listen to the Subiquitous podcast featuring Sue Duffield and you'll find out what crazy means. Sue's travelogue journey of unfiltered stories, impossible miracles, and faith-filled fun will be revisited right here. So buckle up and let's get going with this humorous travelogue of an unfiltered saint, Subiquitous. Now, Jeffrey, you would think that Sue Duffield, when she goes through a car wash, she would immediately know that there are certain rules about these automated car washes, correct? One would think. Yes, and and I'm very aware that we've had some trouble sometimes with the Buick. I don't know why. I can tell you why. Why is that? Well, it's this new fangled, as they say, transmission stick <laughs> that we have. True. It's it's um a little different. You you know because you have the safety buttons that you have to push to to engage it in certain gears. I know you have to press that little right button, right click on with your thumb. Well, it's kind of, yeah, except that it's on the left side of the, the, the oh, stick. Oh, that's right. But, but that's you use okay. your right hand is what that's, I meant to that say. That you do. Yeah. However, <laughs> uh, the tricky part, that's bad enough. There's also another maneuver that you have to do to get it in reverse. Yes. But the real tricky part is when it's in drive. And and then going into neutral. Right. Now, I didn't have that problem yesterday, but I am going to say, because I was in my other car, the Honda. Oh. I wasn't I wasn't in the Buick. Oh, I thought you were in the Buick. No, I'm just I'm just talking generically for excuse, informational purposes. Excuse me, farmer. <laughs> I must be in the wrong joke. By the way, it's nice to have you back. Well, it's nice to be back, uh, even though I've never left. <laughs> I, you've just no one's heard me. But every week, your faithful servant is here producing and editing and uploading podcasts, it's doing just, his best. Well, I should say then it's nice to hear your voice again. Well, thank you. So, as we treat this podcast as it is, we do treat it like it is a radio show. We really do. and A, c- a comedic radio show, by at the times, way. At times. Yes. Like, it gets very serious yes, on here. Yes, it does. But the, today, I want to talk about what happened yesterday when I was going through the automated car wash. And I was in my Honda. So, when I pull up to the, when, I, when the man says, come on, you know, get on the little, what are the tracking device there, whatever they call that, tread? What is um, it? Uh, is there a name for conveyor that? Conveyor belt. Good word. <laughs> Good word. We need our we need our we need our grandson to tell us what these things yeah, are. Yeah, really. Called. And you place the transmission of the vehicle in Honda neutral. Or Buick. In neutral. In correct the neutral. Mode. That's yes. exactly right. So, yes. I I'm on there as I always have done hundreds of times. Yes. And this lady that got on in front of me, I'll be honest with you, I was a little concerned because she was just very she aggressively turned that turn and got on that conveyor system really fast and then jammed on her brakes. So she was in a hurry, I think. I don't know. It just seemed like... you do know, as everyone else does with these conveyor-type systems, you can't hurry them up. No. So we get to the end where the dryer, you know, the big blow dryers start going. Yes. And, you know, you if you're in neutral, the, the conveyor will take you to the edge where your front tires then start to hit the pavement where right. you can drift off, correct? Right. Now, well, you, and it has a little deal on the conveyor that holds the car in place. Right. Until you reach said end of the line, so Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I'm at the end. She's in front of me. And she puts her brakes on as if to say... Before she fully... Exited Before the she, and, you know, I want to get this whole, you know, my, I, I don't know what her name was. It probably was Karen. Her name was Karen. And so she probably with her, with her, you know, her Escalade or whatever she had in front of me, she stopped and I, I, I tapped her with my, I, and then she rolls down her window and yells at me oh, for tapping her bumper. And I said, nerve. I said, honey, I have no control over my car. My car is on the conveyor system. That's right. I can't stop it. However, when you leave the conveyor system, if you're somehow being greedy and want to yeah. eke out just a little bit more of drying yeah. time from the blower, right. you can put your foot on the brake, but it's That's not right. advisable with someone right behind you. No. So anyway, everything stops down. You know, everything mm. shuts down right. and the, the sirens go off and, you know, th- <laughs> three fire engines are coming, <laughs> whatever. No. But this the young gentleman that's probably not 17 years old comes up to me. He said, ma'am, you're not wrong. The woman in front of you is. And I said, I know right, that. Right. And he said... If 
if anything, he says, I have her record. And she sped off and was still yelling at me like I, I was wrong for, for hitting her. Right. And he said, well, we already have her on record. We have a picture of her license plate and she will be revoked. Ooh. So there Re- you go. Revoked. I know. It's like, what wash. a way to spend a Sunday afternoon. right? Film at 11. <laughs> So anyway, all these kinds of things, Jeffrey, happened to me. These kinds of things. Oh, they do every day. And uh, and didn't you tell me that the gentleman, the attendant there at the car wash said that these incidences happen oh, several times a day? Oh, and he said, and, and he said, ma'am, please, for, in his southern accent, ma'am, p- please forgive me for saying this, but I just got to tell you, a lot of times it's it's women who did the drivers that do this stuff. And you know what I did? I was not offended by that. I know you're not. I was not. You know why I was not offended by because that? Because you state constantly that I women drivers. I detest women yes, drivers. You do. Yes, you do. <laughs> Well, so and they're not the only ones that are a problem, but I'll just leave it at go with that. He says an, an, an average, an average could be five to ten times a day where somebody That's puts incredible. their brakes on That's on incredible. the conveyor system and messes it all up. And how many times I have personally driven a car through or as actually more accurately ridden a car through there and never. No, no. And I, and, I, and, and I don't think. It spends enough time on the drier portion of the program well, that's, myself. That's true, and I think. But. Well, yeah. Progress. You move on. You I move mean, on. You then. know, it's a car. It's got water <laughs> on it. It's going to dry. Well, this episode, by the way, is number one forty nine. Aha! Uh-huh. And I'm going to talk about a blog post that I did back. Oh goodness, it's probably 2015 when I did this blog post, Jeff. I'm going to revisit it right here on this episode. But before we do, I want to just kind of get your thoughts on on what I'm going to talk about. Remember the day that I uh, drove mm. the van to the speaking of driving the radio station and and I accidentally whatever bent the the, the front door all the way around to the front. Remember you, when I hit the telephone pole? You were running late. I know. Don't tell the story because I'm going to tell the oh, story. Oh well, excuse me. I, I, I just want to get your yeah, thoughts. Yes, I do remember to answer your question. I. <laughs> vividly remember that day yes i remember you being so mad at me i was mad (laughs) you know usually i let me tell you let me tell these people it takes a lot for jeff duffield to get mad at me i mean he does get mad it does it really does it does because well i love you i know (laughs) and you're you're suited well for me (laughs) i I think it takes a long time for me to get mad at most people get mad i think you have the older you got you have more of a tolerance it's than my, you ever have before in your mo- life it's my mother yeah you, the george duffield part of you has d- diminished it, it has yeah. i feel it has yeah mm-hmm. and i just i just have a little bit more patience and and now that's not to say i don't get frustrated no but you consternated have- um, but when you saw that van bent, the door bent all the way around to the front. You were very like that was that was, that was high world? aggravation. So I'm going to tell because the story of, in detail. Yeah, not okay. because, and again, I won't get into the detail. I'll leave that for you. But not because <laughs> the car was damaged because of an accident. That 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 happens. People stop in front of you coming out of the car wash. It happens. Yes. That was not what aggravated me that morning. It was the fact that I was running late. You were <laughs> laying there in bed knowing know. full well that you need to get your arse well, as it was I'm, up and go to work. My and self-deprecating humor. You will were, tell that. You yes, were so. you were laying there trying to milk trying to milk <laughs> an extra minute and a half of sleep like oh, that was gonna make a big difference in how you felt once you got up. I know. It's and terrible. That was I kept I was saying to you, Don't you have to go to work? <laughs> don't you have to go to the radio station? All right, so you're done, Jeffrey. Ah I'm it didn't of, take long. Yeah, you know, it didn't take let's long. See, nine minutes and eight seconds. Turn and I'm that conveyor here. belt off of your mouth and let's get going. <laughs> with this episode. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll he it. made a brief appearance. Yeah, that didn't did. last long. That no, didn't last long. That's no. Right. Am okay. I gone now? You're done. Okay. Right. I'm back to the editing hole. And the Goodbye. Tr- that's right. The editing hole. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> a lot of this stuff that you're going to hear probably will end up on the on the floor, <laughs> the editing oh, room not floor. Not this one. No, oh, no, this is too good. Oh, okay. No. All right. One second. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. So early one morning, and it's the truth, I was carelessly and speedily driving to my morning shift at WNRK Radio in Delaware years ago, and I stopped 
quickly on the side of the road to pick up a local paper from a coin-operated newspaper box. Remember those things? (laughs) Anyway, pulling over to the opposite side of the road and frivolously jumping out of the van with just two quarters in hand, I thought, you know what? I think I set the gear shift to P for park. I'm not sure, but maybe I didn't. I don't know. But stumbling out to the curb, this two-ton van began its backward escape. And instead, what I did was it was in reverse instead of park. So within seconds, my mind was sure I could just jump back in the van and slam my foot on the brake pedal And great reactions, good instincts, but you know what? My body, however, foolishly took the brunt and helm and decided to intervene. (laughs) And stopping it or slowing it down while grabbing the driver's side door seemed futile. Uh Uh-oh, I could not stop the rolling beast. Now take note, if you're ever in this situation, the one thing that will stop a moving driverless vehicle is a stationary telephone pole. Ask me how I know. It works every time. The door and I were hanging on for dear life. And the pole caught the open door, bending it backwards like a scene from a PBS special with like that Ken Burns slow-mo effect. And it completely bent all the way around forward. And I was jostled between the pole and the side of the van. And I maneuvered myself around the door, jumped inside and jammed my foot on the brake. And I sat there for about 60 seconds, wondering who in the world just witnessed this amazing acrobatic scene. And grabbing the door again from the driver's seat, I attempted to bend the door back to a closed position. But by then, it was almost 5.45 a.m., and I needed to be on the air at 6 (laughs) o'clock. That gave me 15 minutes. So picture this. Here I am driving the busiest rush hour highway right with my right hand on the steering wheel and my left hand gripping the door which was wide open facing the wrong direction and here's what I'm saying to myself I I, (laughs) Jeff is never going to believe this And so when I got to the station, I only had one minute to spare before linking up satellites and grabbing the program program log and saying, good morning, oldies radio. And, you know, I called Jeff during a commercial break and I told him, something strange happened to the driver's door of the van, honey. (laughs) Well, strange and honey are two very unique words in the same sentence. And it was a dead giveaway (laughs) to my husband that this wasn't good. And you heard it. His reaction was priceless. After some hundreds of dollars later, everything was back to normal. Well, somewhat normal. But that not-so-euphoric experience was a conversation piece for some time until Jeff had his own come-to-Jesus meeting with a vehicle and a pole at an ice cream stand. But that's another story. But how in the world could that heavy metal door just bend and mold itself around the stationary telephone pole with amazing ease. You know, it reminded me of my friend Brant Gillespie's songs. His lyric still stays with me after all these years. And although I don't remember them all, it goes something like this. Move me with your message once again and bend my heart once more around the tree. That interesting line, bend my heart once more around the tree, what in the world could that mean? Well, here are a few interpretations that I have. It could mean mold my heart around the cross, the stationary, immovable depiction of a painful, gruesome method of execution. Or how about take my most prized, life-sustaining organ and exchange it for God's act of love and Christ's sacrifice. How weird is that? But better yet, live each day with a cross impression on my heart, much like a piece of metal bending around a telephone pole. And I'm thinking it makes sense today. It makes perfect sense to those of us who, for the kingdom's sake, desire hearts that are bent over backwards, forwards, sideways, whatever it takes to make a God impression in this world. So 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And some of the comments on that blog that I did way back 
are so good that I have to even tell you. Sandra says, you know what, Sue, you're good at this. You got me laughing hysterically, and then smack dab in the middle, you kill me with the truth. Bend my heart around the tree, make a God impression with me, absolutely. And then Jeff even made a comment on it. He probably doesn't even remember this. He says, okay, I had my own, as you phrase it, come to Jesus meeting, but my pole was directly behind me in a parking lot, only three feet tall. Your pole was 30 to 40 feet tall in full view and would have left you alone had you placed the van transmission in park, which you would have certainly done had you left the house five minutes earlier that morning. Plus, my meeting produced a dent in the bumper versus a reconstruction of the whole entire left front fender and door just in the interest of full disclosure just saying lol and then rachel my friend from new york says this is so funny and jeff's response is even better thanks for the good laugh and the truth you conveyed and i read it to my daughter emily after she questioned why i was laughing hysterically i can't wait to see you soon and then i answered back i said it is the conspiracy Here is my whole life being in full view. Get women laughing so hard they don't feel the pain of the impact of truth right away anyway. So again, and I'll say it from a different perspective, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of God of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. And that's from 1 Corinthians 1, 18 and 19. And the theme of that section is the power of the cross and Paul showing us clearly what the cross does in human thinking and even in human affairs. The cross has become the symbol of Christianity today. You know, women wear it on chains around their necks. We use it as decorations. We have become so familiar with the cross that we forgot just how much the impact it has in that first century. It was, for those early Christians and for those among whom they lived, a horrible symbol. If you had used it then as a symbol, it would have made people shudder. We would get much closer to it today if we substituted a symbol of an electric chair for the cross. Wouldn't it be strange driving across the country to see church steeples with electric chairs on top? You know, the cross is significant in Christianity because it exposes the fundamental conflict of life. The cross gets down below all our surface attempts at compromise and cuts through all human disagreement. And once you confront the cross and its meaning, You find yourself unable to escape that final judgment of life as to whether you are committed to error or committed to truth. You know, we got to understand what Paul means by the word of the cross. And first of all, it means the basic announcement of the crucifixion of Jesus. And there are many religious groups based upon various philosophical concepts. But when you come to Christianity, you do not start with philosophy. You start with facts of history that can't be thrown out. And one of them is the incarnation of Jesus, the fact that he was born a man and became among us. Another of the great facts of our faith is his crucifixion. Jesus died. He rose again. It was done at a certain point of time in history and cannot be evaded. This is part of the word of the cross. He did not deserve it. But by the judgment of the Romans and Jews alike, he was put to death for a crime he did not commit. And Paul is pointing to the judgment that the cross makes upon all human life. And when you say that Jesus was crucified, you are saying that when the finest man who ever lived takes our place, he deserves nothing but the instant judgment of God. And that is a judgment on all of us. That is what people do not like about the cross. In fact, it condemns our righteousness. It casts, you know, all kinds of weird stuff on all of our good efforts. And the word of the cross always produces two reactions. First, the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. It's silliness 
absurdity, nonsense to those who are perishing. They don't get it. If you have ever tried to witness to someone who has a sense of sufficiency about themselves, you have discovered the folly of the cross. And to come and tell such a person that all his efforts and all his impressive record of achievements is worth nothing in God's sight, you'll immediately run into the offense of the cross. And the other reaction is that the cross is the power of God to those of us who are being saved. To us who are being saved, the cross is the key to the release of all God's blessing in human life. It's the way to experience the healing of God in the heart, the deliverance from the reign of sin, and the entry into wholeness, peace, and joy. The cross is an inescapable part of that process. So I say today, thank you, Father, for the cross. Thank you that I no longer have to prove myself worthy of your love, but that through the cross you are changing me into the likeness of Jesus Christ. So yes, I agree. Bend my heart once more around the tree of Christ, just like that van door hugging that telephone pole that day. It's a graphic remembrance of my silliness that turned into something that reminds me of the gripping of the cross and never letting go. So thank you again for the right to speak into your heart today, and that would never happen had you not happened upon this podcast. For now, my rights as a believer and an outspoken Christ follower hasn't been revoked, praise God, and your listening ears, you know, they haven't been silenced either. So we ask God's blessing on your life as you continue to support and give financially to keep this ministry and this earth-moving demolition that I would call it, all the preconceived ideas of what a Christian is in the eyes of this fallen world. Guess what? I love you, and we support you, and we praise God for you. And you can get on SueDuffield.com today to stay in touch with us. Man, bend my heart one, one more time around the tree, and I'm good with that. We'll see you next time.